different filming location again for a reason. This is my main Glasgow bench. And it's got the one advantage, it's not perfect for filming, but it does let me fit in big things like this. I'm going to be careful not to fire this out the window here because it's quite a bright light source. This is a Universal Fibre Optics uh, metal halide light source, what you might call a light engine for illuminating bundles of fibre optics that go into this sort of collet here. And this one's got the disc. You may see the colour changing, you may not, because it really is It's going to be quite intense. Well, you can see the colour change there. But it's got a colour disc with patterns that it creates the rippling effect over large areas of fibre optics. And this thing was used for... Uh, it was used in so sh shopping centres and places like that and theatrical venues to power not just sprays of fibre optics like the star fields, things like that, but it was used for things like down lights where you'd have quite bright little points of light all over a ceiling, but they were all fed from a common source. You'll probably find a lot of these still above the ceilings of those shopping centres, but still running. The fans may be still running, but the lamps will have died ages ago. Nobody seemed to know that there was a central lamp running all those light sources. But anyway, uh, let's take a, a look at it. So I'm going to turn it off. And it's now completely red hot because I've had it running for a while to heat up. But that's okay. And let's take a look at the front first. So here is the aluminium collet that uh, has a grub, grub screw in the side to trap the fibre optic bundle that went into it. It has a motor in the front, a bit naughty here because technically speaking, those are single insulated wires over there, but that's okay. It's just they've mounted the motor here to save space. It's a rotolink motor, a decent quality motor, a 240 volt synchronous motor. Here is the fan inlet. My apologies if this is out of focus at any point. It's hard to actually uh, even see what the camera's displaying right now or recording. But let's pop this open. These days, of course, we'd use LED, but there's a lot to be said for these older units that had the metal halide light source. It was also available in tungsten halogen light source, uh, but the metal halide had the advantage of a very long lamp life, and it was a super ultra bright, crisp white light. So let me get this out. LEDs are definitely a better option these days, but... Uh, only if they're used with a rotating disc, because that adds a lot to the thing, to the effect. So I'm going to pop the lid off this, and it'll reveal what is inside. And we should explore it. How hot is it? It's pretty hot. Actually, it's not too bad. So what do we have? We have the incoming supply. Goes through a fused holder here. And it goes straight out to the on-off switch at the side. The on-off switch then comes up to this micro switch here, which is a safety switch that if you take the lid off, it will kill some of the power in the unit. It shouldn't be treated as being a complete isolator because uh, it's just an, what you might call an idiot switch, just for those people who attempt to fix things out, turn the power off to them. Uh, it means that if you're faffing around trying to get the lamp in here and you press that, you could be in for a surprise because this little thing down here puts out 4,000 volts to ignite the lamp. Uh, the safety circuit, which this switch is a part of, then comes down to this little blue component down here, which is a thermal cutout, and it goes back and it feeds the rest of the circuit. It feeds the ballast at the back here, which limits the current through the lamp. Um, it loops up and goes to this uh, power factor correction capacitor, which just basically compensates the inductiveness of that. It is basically in parallel with the power supply. And uh, that then loops across to the fan to power the fan. Now, where is... Oh, right, I see. The fan down here has a little splice joint, and it also then feeds the synchronous motor that rotates the disc. I'll remove the disc afterwards. So, in operation, when power is applied to the ballast, the ballast output goes to this device here, which is an igniter. The igniter superimposes a 4,000 volt pulse onto the output from this current limited supply to the metal halide lamp in here. Uh, this is going to be super red hot. It is red hot. I shall take that out and show you afterwards, but I'll let it cool down first. Um, but that then ignites the lamp, and then it's strictly down to the current limiting of this ballast. The ballast has uh, th four connections. It's got the common connection. It's got 230, 240, and 250 volt taps. It's in the 240 volt tap, reasonable enough. 
This is a big reflector which collimates the light from the metahelide light source and fires it towards the fiber optic bundle. But first thing it hits here is a shield uh, which has a large piece of infrared reflective glass. It's dichroic glass which will bounce back infrared wavelengths possibly. Uh, is it just infrared or is it ultraviolet as well? I would guess it's mainly for infrared. But that blocks uh, the bulk of the heat. Then it hits the disc here. Actually, I can, am I going to be able to get this disc out? I shall try and get this disc out and show you. Let me just try. It's a bad angle for this. Here is the disc. Now, the discs are available in a few different styles. This is a fairly typical pattern. It's got the clear section for the white light, uh, red, and then these black stripes will create a rippling effect. Then you've got the blue, which is very cracked here, but that will effectively, because of the way it works, it provides a visual effect, and then green. Other effects you might get would be blue with uh, stripes across it, or just purely white with bla black stripes to create scintling, scintillating stars. In the case of the sort of Starfield one, you might have blue with little uh, clear dots in it to actually create those little sparkling white points of light over blue sky. The disc itself is this little hub which is siliconed onto the printed disc, but then they've put another blob of silicon on the other side, and they've put another piece of glass, and they've obviously put spacers. It looks as though they've used coins for the thickness, but uh, they've then put, put that on. This is just an extra layer of uh, thermal protection to actually pr protect as much as possible for the heat from the lamp. What else can I show you here? Is this lamp cool enough yet? It's not going to be cool enough yet. It's pretty hot. I shall try and squeeze the lamp out. Crunchy, crunchy, crunchy. Oh, yeah, that's not going to be easy. Bear with me. Oh, there it goes. How easy is this to get out of here? Not that easy. No, not easy at all. Uh, here is the discharge lamp. Kind of old-fashioned now, but, you know, still valid. Um, since this was released, I think, because this is quite an old unit, uh, they'll have had the coloured ones as well, so you could actually theoretically have used uh, blue, green or magenta uh, self-coloured lamps, but this is what was available at the time, and I think the main advantage of this one, uh, this is the 4000K colour temperature Arc Stream by General Electric. Um, this one had the advantage over the tungsten halogen of producing a really intensely fierce white uh, very efficiently. It just meant you could run a lot of light sources with, uh, with good efficiency, but not as efficient as LED these days. Um, anything else to say about this? 240 volt fan, worth mentioning, not as efficient as uh, the 12 volt ones, but keeps it simple. What value is the power factor correct capacitor? What power... Factor value is that. Uh, what is it? I'm trying to read here. Um, it's uh, 20 microfarad. That's a decently high value. But that's more or less it. It was a very simple thing. Just the ballast and lamp, a fan for cooling, uh, the various filters to protect against heat, and then the little synchronous motor, geared synchronous motor, that rotated the colour disc. And as I say, even with LEDs, it's still there's an advantage to using the rotating disc in a white LED because uh, the disc adds a lot to fibre optics, particularly if you've got a big cluster of fine points. The patterns in the disc will actually create quite detailed animation over the surface of that. But that's it. That's what's inside a universal fibre optics 150-watt metal halide fibre optic bundle illuminator.